Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 badass Fast and Furious cars. Hey, my man, you can put that down right there. This is a gift, a real gift. I know what you're doing. <laughs> hey, get in the car. We're all going. No, you. Just the go. I said, we're all going. For this list, we're looking at the vehicles in this action franchise that left lasting impressions, mostly because of how rad they are. Since some of these cars figure into pivotal scenes, beware of spoilers. Which of these cars do you think look the coolest? Drool over them in the comments. Now, start your engines. Number 20, 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, the Fast and Furious franchise. This car had a slightly sorrowful connotation to it, at least for a time. Chronologically speaking, the Roadrunner first appears in the fourth film, where Letty Ortiz is supposedly murdered by Phoenix Calderon. Thankfully, it's confirmed in Fast and Furious 6 that Letty managed to escape the vehicle before it exploded. And good thing too, because we wouldn't want to associate such a sleek muscle car with the death of one of our favorite characters. Before all this prequel drama went down, we remembered it fondly for being what Dominic Toretto rolled up in during his cameo at the end of Tokyo Drift. Our fondness was rewarded when we got to see the conclusion of that scene in Furious 7. Han said you was fast, but not that damn fast. Who said American muscle can't drift? Number 19. 2011 Lexus LFA Fast Five. The Lexus LFA is only featured in a single scene, but it nevertheless makes it a memorable one. After the gang successfully gets away with the loot in Rio de Janeiro, we see snippets of each character's happily ever after, at least until the next adventure, that is. Han and Giselle are seen in the Lexus speeding through Germany with the latter in the former's lap as they kiss. Hazardous driving practices aside, the scene is totally an endearing one, as we totally ship them throughout the entirety of the movie. So where to now? I don't know. Never been to Madrid. I thought you wanted to go to Tokyo. We'll get there. Eventually. The two discuss possible destinations, with Han opting to delay Tokyo in favor of Madrid. Wherever they went next, they certainly got there in style. Number 18. 2003 Acura NSX, Fast and Furious and Fast Five. Anybody up for a game of chicken? The sister of lead character Dom, Mia Toretto, definitely doesn't get the same amount of screen time behind the wheel. But here, she definitely proves her clout. After Dom is captured and sentenced to 25 years to life, the crew doesn't even wait for them to lock him up to break him out. The fourth film ends with the crew getting in position to intercept Dom's prison bus, and Fast Five picks up immediately after. Mia guns the NSX straight at the bus, forcing it to swerve and giving Brian the angle he needs to upend it. Whether we actually believe there were no casualties, the important thing is that they saved Dom and looked badass while doing it. Number 17, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 7, Too Fast, Too Furious. Too Fast, Too Furious definitely had the most colorful cars in the series, and the Lancer Evolution 7 is no exception. Serving as Brian O'Connor's loaner vehicle while working undercover for the US Customs Service, the Lancer gets plenty of opportunities to look pretty. First, Brian demonstrates some cocky yet precise driving during the audition race to get in good with the drug lord Carter Verone. Shit. Damn wrong, man, he like them apples! Show off! Next, he picks up the slack in a relay race after Roman drops the ball in the first leg. And lastly, Brian leads one hell of a car chase against the Miami PD. The Lancer is sadly seized at the end of the ordeal, but luckily Brian wasn't behind the wheel at the time. Oh, fellas, fellas. <laughs> I know my tags are out of date, but damn. Number 16, 2017 McLaren 720S. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. If the Transporter series taught us anything, 
It's that Jason Statham is going to drive a sick-ass car. That trend continues in this Fast and Furious spinoff where Statham's Deckard Shaw uses it to abscond from London with his sister and begrudging partner in tow. The interior may be a little cramped, but that's just going to happen when you're carpooling with The Rock. Marvin Thompson Cows. Very good. With cybernetically enhanced baddie Brixton Lore and other Etion agents in pursuit on motorcycles, Shaw has to utilize some quick maneuvering to get away scot-free. Brixton may have shown Deckard up with the double semi-stunt, but we think the McLaren is cooler, and Deckard later proves that sports car beats motorcycle every time. Number 15, Lamborghini Murcielago LP640, The Fate of the Furious. Wow, I'm in love. The crew should work with the FBI more often because they always seem to have some sweet rides. Though Roman is initially prohibited from using the Lamborghini in New York City due to its obvious bright orange color palette, he finally gets the chance in the Russian Tundra. We're pretty sure that an icy terrain isn't what the manufacturer had in mind, however and Roman lands firmly in the water. Before he even has a moment to shed a tear in grief, though we already were, he promptly ejectoed out of his seato. Yeah! Thankfully, the Lambo lives on in the form of the driver's side door, which Roman uses as a sled, a shield, and finally as a weapon before he's through. All right. I've had enough of this shit! Number 14, 1970 Ford Escort Mark I RS 1600, Fast and Furious 6. Most cars in the Fast and Furious movies are more or less slender, but Brian makes it all work the same in this absolutely cherry vintage rally car. Initially bought by Tej at a London auction, the Escort later gets a starring role in arguably the film's best set piece. As Owen Shaw's team looks to intercept a convoy on a Spanish highway, our protagonists are there to intervene. There's only one problem. They got a tank. I'm sorry, did somebody just say a tank? With Roman's fastback in danger of being eaten by the tank, Brian makes sure Roman has space to land upon abandoning ship. The wrecked fastback now tethered to the tank, Brian uses the escort's bulky body to upend it and make for a good anchor, leading to one show-stopping moment. Number 13, Nissan Fair Lady Z, The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Movie villains have never looked as good as they do behind the wheels of these bad boys. The signature car of Drift King, Takashi, the Fair Lady, makes an early impression upon smoking lead character Sean Boswell in a parking garage drift race. Still, Sean continues to be a thorn in Takashi's side, as he and his sidekick Morimoto, also in a fair lady, go after the protagonist through the city streets. In the same chase that would infamously lead to Han's supposed death, so too does Morimoto and his fair lady meet a definite end. Because no climax would be complete without another drift race, Sean and Takashi leave everything on the table. But this time, Sean proves there's a new Drift King. Number 12, 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. Too fast? Too Furious. Man, it's a fast car, huh? First seen in the audition race hosted by Carter Verone and owned by Darden, this car later transfers ownership to Roman and Brian when they decide that they need more muscle. Thanks to a half-empty bottle of NOS positioned under the passenger seat, the Challenger delivers one of the most famous and quotable scenes in the franchise, when Roman ejects his passenger out of the car, 
With a striking burnt orange color, this car's hard to miss and sure to stand out in any setting. Ejecto Cito Cuz. Ready for it! Ejecto Cito Cuz! It worked! I love this button! <laughs> Number 11, 1966 Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport Stingray. Fast Five. This car might only get a little screen time, but it certainly makes a big impression. Dom and Brian are in a spot of trouble while aboard a moving train. Dom steals the Corvette Grand Sport and drives it off the train with a hard landing, but quickly regains control, showing off the vehicle's impressive handling and speed. Dom catches up to Brian, who jumps into the Corvette just before the car he's holding onto gets utterly demolished. Sadly, with nowhere else to go, it proves a short ride as the car flies off the cliff. Nonetheless, it went out in style, making for one of the most iconic scenes in franchise history. Number 10, 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse GT, The Fast and the Furious. The Fast and Furious franchise was initially built on the back of street racing, and this is where it all began. Looking to infiltrate Dom's crew, the undercover Brian O'Connor enters the uber-sexy Eclipse in a race against Dom and two other drivers. a little too eager to engage the NOS as the second burst overpowers it and sends it into a tailspin, placing him dead last. The eclipse now his, Dom makes sure to roast Brian at the finish line. Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> you almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. Unfortunately, the event is broken up by the police Brian saves Dom from capture, but the two soon find themselves in rival Johnny Tran's territory, who promptly has the Eclipse destroyed. Looks like Brian owes Dom a new 10-second car. Number 9. Flip Car, aka Ramp Car, Fast and Furious 6. Simplest things can cause the biggest problems. Owen Shaw and his crew mean business. Just look at the crazy looking vehicles they employ. In terms of design, this one is a veritable Frankenstein of parts. Despite its minimal utilitarian appearance, the car weighs a staggering 3,900 pounds. What really sets the vehicle apart, however, is the ramp on the front end, which features a flap activated with the click of a button to send cars flipping in the air. We see the devastation it's capable of when Owen Shaw evades the law on the streets of London, driving headfirst into police and launching them skyward, creating obstacles for the pursuers who struggle to avoid the airborne wrecks. Number 8, 2010 Koenigsegg CCXR, Fast Five. When you're a millionaire, have a love for cars, and can afford pretty much anything you want, it makes sense to snag a car that's incredibly rare. Roman does just that, flaunting a sweet ride and the exclusive status it brings him to his pal Tej. It's with a lot of self-satisfaction that he states that he has the only one in the Western Hemisphere. There's only four of those cars in the whole world. Yeah, I got the only one in the Western Hemisphere. Tej breaks it to him that there are actually two, and in fact, he's the guy with the other one. But hey, when you're talking about a car this cool, the more the merrier, right? We'd be excited just to see one. We can always shine together, baby. Number seven, 1970 Plymouth Barracuda, Furious 7. If there's one thing that'll jog a Fast and Furious character's memory, it's winning a race. Dom realizes this in Furious 7, as he brings an amnesiac Letty to a familiar destination, Race Wars. Confident Letty will win against a particular Audi R8, Dom lets her use his Barracuda against it, and sure enough, she does.
memories do start flooding back to her, but they aren't exactly happy ones, putting a damper on the celebration. The Barracuda later reappears in the madness that is the finale, as Letty drives Ramsey through the LA streets as she tries to shut down the God's Eye program. Before that happens, however, they have a little scare when a drone targets them. Thankfully, Hobbs is there. Number 6. W Motors Lycan Hypersport Furious 7 Do you realize what this is? Lycan Hypersport? The fate of this gorgeous W Motors car is devastating. It's owned by a prince in Abu Dhabi and resides in the skyscraper. Yeah, we know. It's expensive and rare. But still, a car like that needs to be driven. Nothing sadder than locking a beast in a cage. Escaping Shaw, Dom gets into the sleek automobile which is an extreme deviation from the usual muscle cars he drives. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of room in the penthouse for the Lycan to spread its wings, but it astonishes in another way by getting driven out of one building and into another twice before slamming into the ground. Number 5. 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback – The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift This Ford Mustang appears in Tokyo Drift and is originally owned by Sean's father. After Han's death, Sean brings that old Mustang to life, installing a Skyline GTR RB26 DETT engine, salvaged from the Nissan Silvia he had driven and wrecked in a previous race against Takashi. It was a weird sight for the viewers to see them put a Japanese engine in a muscle car, but it creates one hell of a custom-built speed machine. Sean wins the race and is proclaimed the new drift king behind the wheel of this unforgettable ride. <laughs> Number 4. Mazda RX-7 Veilside Fortune, aka 1997 Mazda RX-7 FD, The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Is everything okay back there? I can handle this day. The sound of this car is incredible. It's also breathtakingly beautiful and, most importantly, wicked fast. Like, really fast. With an extremely expensive body kit, it's just one of the various cars that Han uses to cruise the streets of Tokyo. We can't help but get a little nervous when Han uses it to teach Sean to drift. But thankfully, Sean doesn't wreck it like he does the Nissan Silvia, proving in the process that he's becoming a competent racer. Viewers felt two losses when the car was T-boned by that Mercedes S-Class. Damn you, Deckard Shaw. Damn you. Dominic Toretto. You don't know me. You're about to. Number 3. Toyota Supra Mark IV. The Fast and the Furious. I know what you're doing. I owe you a 10 second car. How could we not talk about Brian's car in the film that started it all? He owes Dom a 10 second car, and this car is it. With a new engine and a new exterior, sure enough, it wins a lot of races for Dom. Toward the end of the film, Dom finds out about Brian's actual occupation. Yeah, this is Officer Brian O'Connor. I'm off duty MAPD. Dom's Charger and Brian's Supra go head to head. They both narrowly avoid being wiped out by a train, but the Charger is demolished by a truck. Brian then gives Dom the keys to the Supra to escape. Number 2. 1999 Nissan Skyline GTR R34. Too fast, too furious. <laughs> This is Brian O'Connor's signature car and easily one of the most iconic rides of the Fast and Furious franchise. First appearing in the turbocharged prelude to the second film, Brian gives it a paint job and works on it underneath before using it in a number of races. Unfortunately, Brian is caught after finishing a race thanks to a freaking electromagnetic pulse harpoon being fired into the skyline, and the car is impounded following his arrest. 
It's a real shame the car didn't have more on-screen time, but Brian would go on to drive more Skylines in the series. Proceed straight ahead. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Chevelle SS, Fast and Furious. Ford GT40, Fast Five. Two thousand Honda S two thousand, too fast, too furious. <laughs> Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution Nine, the fast and the furious Tokyo Drift. <laughs> continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 1970 Dodge Charger RT – The Fast and the Furious Franchise This is Dom Toretto's signature car and arguably the most recognizable of the series as well. Dom has a connection to it, as it was his father's before him, with the two of them working on it together when Dom was just a kid. Perhaps that's why we keep coming back to it, no matter how many times the Charger gets destroyed. Over the course of the franchise, the car has undergone various iterations and changes. Who could forget the off-road version in Furious 7, when the crew needs different cars in the sixth movie? Dom, of course, picks another Charger, the Daytona, but hey, you can't beat that classic look. That car is really like a cast member of the film, so it has to keep coming back. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.